Hello, and welcome to this webinar about balancing rations using Pearson squares. I'm Megan Van Emmen, Extension Beef Cattle Specialist with Montana State University. So there are a few things we need to know before we start to balance rations, whether using a Pearson square or using a computer program. We need to know the class of cattle to determine the nutrient requirements of those cattle and if the ration we develop will meet those requirements. Um, the second, how long are we going to be feeding these animals for? Uh, third, what's the current body weight and body condition score of those animals? Are they in good body condition? Do we need to start looking at adding weight to our mature cows or maybe our bulls, um, which increases their nutrient requirements? Therefore, we may have to alter the ration to meet those requirements. What production stage are your animals in? Are we dealing with gestating cows, cows in early or peak lactation, um, at weaning when those lactational requirements are removed, anything like that? Um, how big is the calf gonna be if we're dealing with our gestating cows? Um, this helps us determine what kind of demand that will put on uh, the cow nutrient requirements. Weight gain more specific to our feedlot um, area as well as then our developing heifers. How much weight do we want those heifers to be gaining or our steers to be gaining every day? At what age will we be breeding our heifers? Um, this helps us determine how much our heifers should weigh to ensure we have a successful breeding season. What feed ingredients are you looking to use in your ration? Next. Have you completed a nutrient analysis? Have you collected samples to send off to a lab and get an accurate analysis complete? Therefore, we can have a better picture of our nutrients and having an accurate picture then leads to a more accurate ration. Implants more on the feedlot sector, um, which can improve feed efficiency and production. And then especially for our feedlot, uh, sector looking at what our target weight is at finishing. And so including vitamins and minerals in a ration can be done. However, due to the complexity of many of our uh, commercial mineral supplements, um, I look at those separately as well to ensure that when feeding the optimum amount, they are meeting those vitamin and mineral requirements by itself. Now looking at our Pearson Square, we can utilize two feed ingredients, whether that is a mixture or a single feed ingredient. Now the number in the middle, this 11%, must fall between the two feeds on the left. So as you can see, we have on our chopped hay, 12.25% in the top left, 10.8% in our bottom left. Now, Another thing to note is this is all done on a dry matter basis. This is how we um, develop our rations is by using our dry matters. This doesn't allow for that uh, water factor because that can dilute our numbers and this puts all of our feed ingredients on the same level. So removing that water and so we only deal in dry matter basis. Now, um, in step four, I'll demonstrate how we move back to an as-fed basis and determine how much we would be feeding um, of each feed ingredient. So um, in this example, 11% is the crude protein uh, requirement for the animals that we are developing a ration for. So that's what we're gonna shoot for in this ration. And we have a chopped hay at 88% dry matter, 12.25% protein. And we want to mix that with corn silage, which is 35% dry matter and 10.8% protein. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this top left corner here, the 12.25%, and subtract 11% from it, and we get 1.25. We're going to come over here in the bottom left to our corn silage, subtract diagonally, so we're going to subtract 11%, gets us 0.2 parts. Now, if you end up with negative numbers, 
we disregard those negative numbers. So instead of it being a negative 0.2, it is just 0.2. And then we move our feed ingredients straight across to the right. So meaning we have 0.2 parts of chopped hay and 1.25 parts of corn silage, giving us when we add the two parts together, 1.45 total parts. Now to determine how much on a percentage basis we need to include for our chopped hay and our corn silage on a dry matter basis, we move on to step four. So we have our total parts and we have our individual parts of each feed ingredient. So to get the percent of chopped hay needed on a dry matter basis, we take 0.2 divided by 1.45, multiply that by 100. And on a dry matter basis, we get 13.8% chopped hay. We do the same equation with our corn silage and we get 86.2% um, of diet dry matter of the corn silage. Now, if we add 86.2% to 13.8% equals 100%. So we've accounted for the entire diet with our two feed ingredients. We can then check that calculation in step five to make sure we did meet our 11% goal, protein goal of that ration. So we have 13.8 pounds of chopped hay, 12.25% protein in that chopped hay gets us 1.69 pounds of protein. Now we needed 86.2 pounds of corn silage times 10.8% protein gets us 9.31 pounds of protein. So 86.2, 13.8 gets us a hundred pound total ration or that 100%. We add 9.31 to 1.69. We get 11 pounds of crude protein, 11 in divided by 100, 11% protein. Now, when we're getting ready to make this ration, we think in terms of as fed, meaning that water is still included. So we have to then convert dry matter into as fed. So we have our 13.8 here of our dry matter inclusion for chopped hay divided by 88 or the percent dry matter of that ingredient divided by 100 gets us our dry matter of that ingredient on a decimal basis. So we would have 13.8 divided by 0.88, which gets us 15.7 parts. Now, if we look at corn silage, we have our 86.2 divided by dry matter on a decimal basis, which is 0.35 and gets us 246.3 parts. Now, very similar to our dry matter, we add 246.3 and 15.7 to get our total parts, which equals 262 parts. Similar once again to our dry matter, 15.7 parts divided by 262 equals 6% of the diet as fed of chopped hay. We do this same equation for our corn silage and we end up with 94% of the diet as fed of corn silage. We had 94 and six, which gets us to 100% of the diet on an as fed basis. So we are completing the Pearson square and dry matter and then moving forward and converting that back to an as fed basis, which then you can use to determine how many pounds of each feed ingredient you'll need to mix together to create that ration. Now we can also use a Pearson square to mix two different hays together to create an optimal ration. It also helps us prolong the use of our good quality hays while still utilizing those low quality hays, we most likely won't be feeding as a single feed ingredient. 
This can help us maintain that good quality hay supply for a longer period of time. In our top left corner, we have our good quality hay at 15.05% protein, and our low quality hay on the bottom left corner at 4.89% protein. Now, we're looking for an 8% protein diet for our mature cows, and once again, we just subtract diagonally, which gets us 3.11 parts of good quality hay and 7.05 parts of low quality hay, totaling 10.16 parts. So once again, we complete steps four and five. So in our good quality hay, 3.11 divided by 10.16 times 100 gets us 30.6% of the diet dry matter as good quality hay. With our low quality hay, 7.05 divided by 10.16 times 100 gets us 69.4% of diet dry matter as our low quality hay. So if we think about it, about on a dry matter basis, about one third good quality hay and two thirds low quality hay can be mixed together to create that 8% protein ration um, for our mature cows. Now we can check that equation down below here in step five, put it on a 100 pound total ration basis. Um, for good quality hay, 30.6 pounds times 15.05% protein gets us 4.61 pounds of protein. Same equation for our low quality hay gets us 3.39 pounds of protein, totaling eight pounds of protein or an 8% protein diet. We can then determine on an as-fed basis how much of this hay we will be adding together to create that 8% protein dry matter basis hay mix. So if we continue with those equations uh, for step four and converting to an as-fed basis, um, 30.6 divided by 0.86 gets us 35.6 parts of good quality hay. Same equation, little bit different dry matter on our low quality hay at 0.89, gets us 78 parts of our low quality hay. We add those two together, 78 plus 35.6, gets us 113.6 total parts as fed, equaling 68.7% of the diet as fed for our low quality hay and 31.3% of the diet as fed for our good quality hay. Once again, very similar to our dry matter due to the similarities between the dry matters of each of those hays. Um, so two thirds low quality hay, one third good quality hay can create that 8% protein mixture. Now we can also look at a Pearson square, not just on a protein in the middle here ration but also as a TDN or total digestible nutrients or energy basis as well. So taking those same two hays, subtracting across to get us our 54% uh, mixture, 5.6 parts of good quality hay, 4.49 parts of our low quality hay, totaling 10.09 total parts. Once again, we do the same equations as we've done previously. This gets us to 55.5% of the good quality hay on a dry matter basis and 44.5% of the diet on a dry matter basis of low quality hay. We can, once again, same equation in step five to check our calculation. And then we can once again convert to as fed which in this case for energy gets us about a 50-50 blend of low quality and good quality hay for meeting that uh, energy ration we wish to create at 54%. So we can only use two ingredients in our Pearson square. That doesn't mean we can't mix more than two ingredients together to create 
a complete ration. So in this example, we're going to be looking to find a 13% protein ration utilizing a supplement of 50% soybean meal and 50% corn gluten feed and mixing that with our hay corn silage mixture we developed in our first example. So for soybean meal, it's 90% dry matter with 54% protein. Our corn gluten feed is 88% dry matter with 24% protein. So in step one, we need to calculate the protein in the supplement. So 0.5 times 54% gets us 27% protein. 0.5 for corn gluten feed, which is the inclusion rate, times 24% protein gets us 12% protein. We add these two together, and that gets us our protein of our supplement of 39%. We do the same with our hay corn silage mix. Now from step one, we already know it is an 11% protein um, mixture. However, we can follow the same steps as we did in step one for the supplement. We also do the same steps for our dry matter, which will be needed when we convert to as fed. So in our upper left corner, we have 39% protein supplement. Bottom left corner is our 11% hay corn silage mix. Once again, subtract diagonally from our 13%, and we get 26 parts of our hay corn silage mix and two parts of our supplement, totaling 28 parts. Now, we do the exact same equations as we did in our previous two examples. Um, overall supplement inclusion, so supplement parts were two, divided by 28, our total parts, times 100, which gets us 7.1% of diet dry matter included as the supplement. We do the same equation for our hay corn silage mix, and we get 92.9% of diet dry matter as our hay corn silage mix in the ration. 92.9 plus 7.1 is 100%. Now we can then further calculate how much of each feed ingredient needs to be included in the total ration. So two parts for the supplement times 50% for each soybean meal and corn gluten field gets us one part each of corn gluten feed and soybean meal. We take that one part divided by 28, our total parts for the entire ration, times 100, and gets us 3.57% soybean meal and 3.57% of corn gluten feed. Same equations for our hay corn silage mix, but as we noted in our first example, we had um, a total of 26 parts. So we know from our first example, that we needed 13.8% inclusion in that hay to get our mixture. So that equals 26 parts times 13.8% gets us 3.6 parts of that chopped hay. 26 parts times 86.2% corn silage gets us 22.4 parts. And then once again, we follow the same equations, 3.6 parts divided by 28 total parts times 100 gets us 12.86% hay and 80% corn silage in this ration. Now, like I said, we can also do this on an as-fed basis as well. 7.1% of the supplement divided by 0.89 gets us eight parts. And then 92.9 divided by 0.423 uh, dry matter gets us 219.6 parts. Add those parts together and we get 227.6 total parts as on an as-fed basis, equaling 3.5% supplement on an as-fed basis and 96.5% of the hay corn silage mix on an as-fed basis. We continue on and we can do our 
individual ingredients as well based on each individual dry matter equaling 1.6% uh, uh, soybean meal and 1.6% corn gluten feed on an as-fed basis in the ration. Our hay ends up being 5.8% of the ration and our corn silage is 91% of the ration. So we can go through and do everything on a dry matter basis and then convert back to an as-fed basis as you're preparing to mix the diet together. Now we can change these numbers if you're taking multiple samples for nutrient analysis and your dry matters happen to change. So we can do all of these and create rations needed to meet our animals requirements. Now to check our uh, solution for our last example, we once again put it on a 100 pound basis multiply by our crude proteins, and then add everything up and we get that 13% crude protein ration. Just remembering that when we're going to check that equation, we want to use the dry matter basis. And just to ensure when you're creating these rations using a Pearson square, you are using the dry matter content from your nutrient analysis and then converting back to as fed. Do not start with an as fed with that, I'm Megan Van Emmen, Extension Beef Cattle Specialist with Montana State University. Thanks and have a great day.